Hi everyone, I'm Emily Chang and joining me now is Chris Marzalek, CEO and co-founder of Crypto.com, joining us on a late evening in Singapore. Chris, thanks for staying up for us and great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Emily. Great to be here. <laughs> so I want to start looking at the year ahead in crypto by going backwards. Talk to us about how the market evolved over the last year because there was a huge pickup in adoption. And I wonder if you really think we hit mainstream, quote unquote. You know, absolutely. It was a fantastic year for crypto uh, in general. We've, uh, we've grew the industry from about 100 million people to almost 300, so a factor of three. Um, increased participation both from retail and institutions. And I think that um, you know, crypto entered mainstream. Uh, it's, it's now a part of the culture. Uh, it's this unstoppable avalanche. So uh, we are very happy that we were, be able, we were able to play a small part in this, um, in this rising adoption of cryptocurrency globally. In a new report, in a new report uh, that you're just now putting out, you talk about Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Which was stronger and why? We don't really like picking winners. Um, I think uh, what you will see is a multi-chain future with, with different chains serving different purposes. Um, and both have extremely strong years. So um, I think it remains to be seen um, what kind of additional innovation is going to come out of this space. And it's definitely not going to be limited to those two that you mentioned. But you talk about how Ethereum weakened over the second half of the year, and I'm curious what you attribute that to, given especially all of the hype and interest around the merge and the future of Ethereum itself. Right, I think uh, particularly the second half of the year, you could see a rise of uh, multiple LL networks, um, and it um, creates a sort of more, more dispersion in, in both user attention and in terms of uh, people's investments. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Um, I think, again, uh, the future is multi-chain and different uh, technologies are going to be used for different use cases. Um, um, so the overall very strong year for the industry. So let's talk about the future. You expect global crypto users to hit 1 billion by the end of this year, up from 295 million last month. What makes you think we're definitely going to get get there. What gives you that confidence? I think one of the key um, things to look at here is the expanding expansion of use cases. Um, so, um, 2021, very strong traction in terms of blockchain gaming, and um, you know, mobile gaming as a use case, it's three billion MAUs, um, monthly active users versus 300 million cryptocurrency holders globally. All right, so you've got uh, now a use case is growing extremely rapidly. Um, uh, that can basically 10x the entire space. And I think uh, people underestimate, um, you know, how long it takes to get to this inflection point. But once you're there, it's just going to snowball. Um, and there's obviously plenty of innovation happening in other areas, but this particular use case is something we're very, very excited about and we're investing in heavily. Well, speaking of snowball, are we in a crypto winter? What's happening right now? <laughs> Uh, look, um, the market uh, uh, is, uh, is, is still nascent. You know, it's uh, it's been highly cyclical, uh, but it's also connected to what's happening in the broader uh, financial ecosystem, right? So, uh, whatever moves you see uh, from the Fed that uh, affects equity markets or bond markets, this spills over into cryptocurrency space as well. Um, I think that. Even you, you may see some sort of slowdown or volatility happening in Q1 and Q2. Uh, the industry is on fundamentally such a, such a strong trajectory with such strong uh, tailwinds that uh, uh, second half of the year is going to be uh, phenomenal again. So do you think we get to 100,000 for Bitcoin by the end of the year? Um, I'm not very good at, uh, at predicting <laughs> prices. Uh, we're more in the business of, uh, of building rather than uh, uh, than, than figuring out what the market will do. Uh, I think a good idea is to take a very long-term view and see what this technology can do um, uh, to the entire internet over the course of the next five to 10 years. And if you take this type of uh, view, then you just, you just don't really care about the, the movements day to day or month to month. So 
let's talk about the business. What sets crypto.com apart from FTX or Binance? What is your special sauce and why should traders choose you? Uh, we've got an entire ecosystem of products um, uh, from um, you know, the retail products for someone who just wants to buy their first Bitcoin all the way to institutional traders who trade hundreds of millions of dollars every day and everything in between. So you can uh, find it uh, in one place from um, a, a regulated platform that's got great UX and, and low fees. Um, uh, and you know, the business has been growing phenomenally. We grew about 22 uh, times our revenue last year. So just massive, massive growth. Um, we grew from about 700 people to over 3,000. Um, so we, we, we must be doing something right for our customers um, um, in terms of the, the products that we offer and, and, uh, and how we serve them. Now, that said, the last 48 hours for crypto.com has been a little harrowing. You paused withdrawals, transactions due to unauthorized activity, quote unquote, traders reported seeing suspicious activity. What happened here? What was behind this hack? Right. So first and foremost, um, we invest very heavily in cybersecurity. We've got over 200 professionals around the world who collectively spent the last few years building a very robust infrastructure. And uh, we call it defense in depth. So there are multiple layers. And in this particular incident, some of these uh, layers were breached, which resulted in about 400 accounts um, uh, having unauthorized transactions on it. We very quickly stopped it. We paused withdrawals. We fixed it. We were back uh, online in about 13, 14 hours. And during the same day, all the accounts that were affected were fully reimbursed. So there was no loss of customer funds. Uh, obviously, you know, it's a great lesson. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, we are continuously strengthening our infrastructure. One outside analyst estimates $15 million was lost. I, I saw another estimate as high as $33 million. Can you give us a number? Right, we are still working on a postmortem for the incident, and it's going to be posted um, um, on our blog in the next couple of days. Uh, so I will uh, leave the final numbers till um, uh, till then. We're working on it. Uh, in any case, uh, one has to remember that given the scale of the business, uh, you know, these these numbers are not particularly material, and customer funds were never at risk. So I'm curious, what more you're doing about this? What are you doing and what are the plans you're putting in place now to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future? Yeah, there are additional layers of security that uh, we're implementing you know, as, well as, uh, as well as some new programs that we'll be launching together with the postmortem. I don't want to reveal too much at this stage, but uh, the industry will, uh, will know in a couple of days, how are we going to address this? Historically, we led the industry in terms of uh, security standards, uh, certifications, and we heavily, very heavily invest in having military grade infrastructure. So we'll continue strengthening it um, and, and, and leading the industry to keep uh, this place more safe for everybody. As, as I mentioned, you're joining us early from Singapore. The exchange is based in Singapore. Ha have you had any conversations with the Singapore Monetary Authority? Have they reached out? And what have you told them? Um, and, and, and curious what they're asking for. Right, at this stage, we did not see any outreach from the regulators. Um, you know, we are a, a regulated business uh, in multiple uh, jurisdictions, so we expect this, and we're putting together all the relevant reports um, uh, that we will share uh, whenever an inquiry comes in. Um, it's just, uh, uh, you know, part of the preparation and part of the process of closing this incident with a full postmortem. What's it like operating in Singapore? We've seen regulators take so many different approaches to cryptocurrency around the world, from the US to China. Talk to us about the environment there. I think um, Singapore is very supportive of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency industry in general. Um, and there, is, uh, there is a new law that has been enacted, uh, uh, written about two years ago. And it's a pretty robust framework that I think other countries should be uh, looking at, uh, we're in the process of securing two licenses over there. Um, so overall, very, very supportive environment. I think it's a great place for the uh, for the industry players, and there's a, quite a, a large number of players there. Now, as I understand it, we're seeing some sort of crackdown happening in Singapore. Cryptocurrency ATMs are being shuttered. There's a crackdown on marketing. How is that impacting your plans? 
I think um, the general uh, point of view of the regulator is um, uh, that the, the, the markets are still too volatile for um, uh, the general public to participate in. So they want, want to rein in some of this, um, uh, this marketing activity. And I think over time, as the industry reaches new stages of maturity, this will be gradually relaxed. So it does not affect um, our plans um, uh, in, a, in any meaningful way. Uh, we are committed to continuous investment in Singapore. Uh, you know, we've, we've got a large and growing team there and, uh, and working on licenses, and it's an important market for us as well. Well, speaking of licenses, last month here in the United States, the iconic Staples Center in LA became the crypto.com arena. You did a deal for naming rights $700 million over 20 years. What does a sports partnership like that do for crypto.com, for your business and your brand? Right, you started the conversation by asking whether this uh, the, the industry went mainstream last year. I think one of, this was one of the, uh, the step of moments, uh, you know, it, and Staples Center is, is, is really special. It's such an iconic venue, and people really care deeply about uh, both its legacy as well as what is what's going to happen with it in the future. So it was um, a way for us to um, make a statement and uh, say that cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's a 20-year um, uh, commitment, so it's, uh, it also signifies uh, our long-term view and, and, and and the fact that we're very bullish on the industry and where it's going. You've also got some other partnerships going, sports partnerships, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Australian Football League. You're doing a deal with their women's league, which I believe is the first of its kind for women's sports. I'm curious what the motivation was for that. And what do you think about the lack of women in crypto and as owners and as builders and what we can do to change it? All right, so I think... Um... The primary reason for uh, doing that particular partnership is that there's an alignment of values. There's, um, you know, we're all about self-determination and and um, you know, reaching your your own goals, driving your own growth. So uh, we're speaking the same language, um, but more broadly, uh, for us, uh, these partnerships are part of a strategy to become one of the top twenty. Uh, brands in the world, um, uh, a brand that people can uh, really have an emotional connection with at, at, at the level of values. Uh, so we want, to, we want people to understand what, what does this name stand for and how does it connect with issues that they care deeply about. What kind of engagement are you seeing with athletes more broadly? What do they care about, and, 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 and especially in communities that are really passionate about sport? Right, so if you, if you look at athletes, I think there's a lot of interest in this, uh, in this new space and how it's going to impact sports in general, how it's going to impact the way they interact with their fan base. Um, and uh, there's definitely a lot of interest. Um, and we're having quite a number of very interesting conversations on this front, but um, I think it's still a little bit too early to talk about it. Now, I have to ask you about your marketing campaigns. Your big Matt Damon ad got a ton of publicity. It's still you know, the main imagery on your homepage. Is investing in crypto really as brave as summiting Mount Everest? <laughs> right, I get this question um, uh, quite a lot. I think the reason why that particular campaign resonates with people is that it's about building stuff and not about buying stuff. Um, and, you know, what we are building as an industry, as an ecosystem, is, is just the next iteration of the internet. And it's, uh, as a goal, it's, it's, it's very ambitious, and it's only natural that people are going to doubt whether this can be done or whether this even makes sense. And there's a, a lot of doubters there. Um, so we wanted to go out with a message that underscores that this is a, a, a long journey that requires a commitment and, and grit uh, um, and courage, uh, but I, I believe very strongly that we will get there. And you need to have this kind of belief. You need to you need to have this commitment. Um, and in in the end, and uh, when when Web three is uh, uh, reaches its its full potential, you know the, the user is not going to be the product. Users are going to co-own the networks. So it's um, 
I think it's it's something worth working on. It's, it's potentially extremely impactful. So does that mean you're going to keep Matt Damon around? <laughs> we love <laughs> Matt Damon. As the face of crypto.com. <laughs> we love Matt Damon. We would love to do more stuff with him. Um, uh, I think a lot of criticism uh, around this, uh, this spot is from people who either didn't see it or uh, uh, or they're just like fundamentally not supportive of the industry and, and, and don't have the full view of the kind of potential that it has to improve even their lives. Well, if they want to see it in full, they can go to crypto.com. Um, let's talk about what themes you think are going to drive the industry in the year ahead. Some predictions, please. Predictions, definitely gaming and metaverse and, and in, in a sense gaming is the gateway to to the metaverse so there's going to be plenty of activity in this space uh, for us um, you know we we take the approach that you know we um, we're going to uh, play in the MA space in the gaming uh, uh, side of things to just build a discoverability very quickly uh, not to the size of microsoft 70 billion dollar acquisition um, uh, probably a little bit smaller but we are we're working on a few deals in this space um, and uh, and I think this is going to be absolutely critical. Uh, building um, new experiences uh, in the metaverse with, with gaming being being the gateway to onboard more users uh, into this space. Still, investors and potential investors really want regulatory clarity. What are you most worried about when it comes to regulation, and what would you most like to see? I think there's an element of uh, of education. The, the 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 industry historically has not done a good job of of uh, of, of going to the regulators as as an industry with with, with a clear plan and, and clear messaging. Um, so you've got some individual efforts coming from different uh, players and and. And, and that makes it more difficult uh, for regulators around the world to actually understand the space. And we should be uh, more helpful in guiding them uh, so that they understand how to regulate effectively in order to reach their policy goals without killing innovation in the process. Right? Uh, so I think we have to do better as an industry on, on this particular side. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of um, work that is being put into this uh, by a number of players, us included. So we'll make sure that uh, our voice is heard in the coming months and years and that whatever uh, laws are being uh, uh, put in place, you know, pro give market clarity, protect the investors, but do not feed innovation. Well, crypto.com does have an opportunity to place its own bets on the future. You've got a venture arm. There is a lot of money flowing there. FTX, Coinbase, Paradigm, also investing in new crypto projects. What are you most excited about? What kind of projects are we going to see you fund and support? All right. So our fund um, was launched only about nine months ago. Um, it's a $500 million fund. We've made about 30 investments so far. It's typically... Uh, you know, seed Series A stage. Uh, sometimes we do a slightly later deals, but very rarely. And um, the, the areas that we invest in is metaverse, DeFi, NFT. So all the hot themes that that you could uh, that, that that you're very um, well aware of. Um, I think the key reason why uh, founders love working with us is first and foremost, you know, we are now the third largest crypto platform globally in terms of uh, user base size uh, we are funders ourselves so we, we, we have got they were super quick to make decisions we are keen to lead rounds we don't founders spend time fundraising they should be spending the time building stuff in the industry right uh, so having this ecosystem and giving uh, these new players access to it allows them to scale faster uh, and at the same time, you know, we, we're just very supportive because we understand the journey of taking an idea from a napkin and building it into, into something meaningful. Now, as you look ahead, what are you most worried about? I, I just spoke with Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy, of course, the largest corporate holder of Bitcoin in the world, more bullish than just about anyone. He said he thinks the writing is on the wall for crypto exchanges when it comes to regulation. 
What do you think about that? And, 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 and what sort of keeps you up at night as you think about the year ahead? Right, we've uh, we've built a, a strong regulatory infrastructure over the last uh, four years, so we, we don't have um, concerns on on that front. Our biggest worry these days is that as we're scaling this, this company very quickly, um, you know, if we've grew headcount four times in the last twelve months, and we're going to be at 10, 15,000 people in eighteen months, um, preserving our culture, um, remembering what made us successful as a business. And, and keeping uh, true to our core values. Uh, I, I think this is top of mind. All right, well, that's good to hear, especially as you project the market hitting 1 billion before the end of the year. Chris Marzalek, CEO and co-founder of Crypto.com. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you get some sleep after this. Thanks for having me, Amelia.